Welcome to the Greeks. This is the first in a multi-part series where we're going to go over each of the Greeks using option trading. This video will be on the easiest, but I think the most important Greek, and that's Delta. Now what's really cool about Delta is that it's not only for option trading. All of the other Greeks that we're going to do videos on, like Gamma, Vega, and Theta, they apply only to option trading. But Delta is an incredibly useful risk management indicator for your overall portfolio, regardless if you're trading stocks, options, or a combination of both. So if that sounds interesting, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and we'll see you after the intro. All right, so real quick, the first thing I wanna show you is where to find Delta in your trading platform. So this is Thinkorswim. If you're using something different, I'm sure it's very similar, but on Thinkorswim, all you do is you go up to this layout tab right here and just make sure that the Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega button is selected. Once you do that, what you'll see is, you know, you got your calls on the left side, your puts on the right side, and on each side, you'll have this Delta column. So what I want you to notice from this page is that on the calls, Delta, will go from right around zero up to almost one, or basically up to one. And on the puts, it'll do the exact same thing. The range will be from zero to one, but in this case, it's negative. So it goes from zero to negative one. So just keep that in mind as we're going through the rest of this video. Calls are gonna be positive delta, and puts are gonna be negative delta. All right, so let's get into now, what is delta and how do we use it? So from a purely mathematical perspective, delta is the first derivative of the option price with respect to the price of the underlying stock. So that's just a bunch of fancy words, but what does it really mean? Well, what it tells you is it gives you the rate of change of the option price compared to the price change in the underlying stock. So for example, let's say you're looking at call options and they have a delta of 0.25. What that tells you is that the option price is going to change by 25 cents for every $1 that the stock price moves in. Well, that's some pretty useful information now, isn't it? I mean, if you're buying options, you wanna know how much the stock needs to move in order for your option to make some type of meaningful profit. Or on the flip side, you wanna know where to put your stock alert so that you can minimize losses in your option if the stock price moves below a certain level. Now, what about those positive and negative signs on Delta? Remember, calls were positive, puts were negative. Well, when you think about it, that makes perfect sense with the correlation of the option price and the underlying stock. For example, your calls are gonna increase in value when the stock price goes up. So that's why they're positive. On the flip side of that, if your stock price is going up, but you bought a put, your put option price is gonna decrease. And that's for the negative sign. So just to make sure we're clear on this, if we look at that previous example, if you bought puts instead of calls, your delta would have been negative 0.25. So that means for every $1 increase in the stock price, you would lose 25 cents, as opposed to the call where you were making 25 cents. So basically, just keep it in mind this way. If you're long calls, you got a positive delta. If you're short calls, that gives you a negative delta. Conversely, if you're long puts, you get a negative delta. And if you're short puts, you get a positive delta. Now, if I'm gonna be completely honest, this is not how I typically use delta. I mean, this was the, the textbook mathematical interpretation of delta. And yes, it gives you some important information, but there's an even more useful way to look at delta. Delta gives you the approximate probability of an option expiring in the money. Now that's really useful information. If you look up at the top right hand corner, I'm gonna post a link to a video that I did um, where I explained three very easy but highly effective option strategies. So please check those out. But what I will say for the purpose of this video is anytime I'm putting on an option trade, I have a target delta in mind. In other words, I have a target probability that I'm looking for. And that's how I choose my strike prices. And now that target delta can vary depending on the strategy I'm using. And that's why I refer you to this other video. But just to make sure you're understanding this process, let's go over a quick example. So one of the strategies I cover in my option trading video is covered calls. And it's probably one of the easiest to do. So let's say as an example, you have 100 shares in a stock. You can sell calls against your position and generate additional gains. And you could do this weekly, monthly, you know, on whatever time frame you wanna do. Basically all you're doing is you're selling a call that's out of the money and you want that call to expire worthless so that you can keep the premium. When choosing what strike price you're gonna sell the call at, you want it to be such that it's bringing in enough premium that it's worth doing, but at the same time, it's not likely that it's gonna call away your underlying stock. So for this type of trade, I target selling calls with a delta of somewhere around 0.25 to 
Now what that means is that there's a 25 to 30% probability of expiring in the money. But a better way to look at it for this type of trade, that means you have a 70 to 75% chance of this option expiring worthless or out of the money and you get to keep the premium. So, I mean, that's exactly what you want. I mean, then you can just do this over again the following week or the following month and, and keep generating income on your existing stock positions that you're holding. So anyway, check out that other option video. Like I said, there's, there's three really good strategies in there you can use. I'll, I'll repost the link again at the end of this video if you want to take a look at it. But now that we know how to use Delta for options, let's look at one last use of Delta as a risk management tool. But first, some background. So anytime you're trading, you always have to have some sense of how bullish or bearish you are on the overall market. And by the overall market, I mean, you know, let's say looking at the SPY, for example. Now, there's various ways to determine that, you know, other than just a kind of a gut check of, you know, where you think the market's going. There's actual indicators and, and stuff you can use to help you determine, you know, the bearishness or bullishness of a market. But that's way outside the scope of this video. For the purposes of this video, I'll give you some numbers that we typically use, and at least that'll get you started on track with, with analyzing your overall portfolio. So let's start off with, let's say over the next several weeks, you're pretty much neutral on the market. You know, So you think the market's gonna trade sideways, You know, maybe chop around a little bit. If you're neutral on the market, then you should target an overall portfolio delta of somewhere between 100 to negative 100. Now, let's say you're slightly to moderately bullish. So you think over the next several weeks, the market's gonna go up a little bit, it's gonna be trending up, but you know nothing too crazy. In that case, you wanna target an overall portfolio delta of somewhere between 100 to 400. And finally, let's say you're very bullish on the market. Okay, so in the next several weeks or a couple months, you think the market is going to make some really big gains and you don't want to miss out on those. In that case, you want to position yourself with your portfolio so you have an overall delta of somewhere around four to 700. Now on the bearish side, the numbers are exactly the same. You just put a negative sign in front of them. So if you're slightly to moderately bearish, you want to target an overall delta of about negative 100 to negative 400. And similarly, if you are extremely bearish, you want to target an overall delta of negative 400 to negative 700. And again, remember, the positive and negative signs, all they do is indicate correlation with stock price. So it makes perfect sense that if you're bullish, you would have a positive sign because you want to correlate increasing stock prices. But if you're bearish and you think stocks are going to go down and you want your portfolio balance to go up, you have that inverse relationship and that's where the negative sign comes in. All right, so one last thing I want to go over in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use your trading platform to calculate your portfolio delta for you, because it's not an easy calculation to do on your own. So again, I'm using Thinkorswim. Hopefully whatever platform you're using is very similar, or if you're using Thinkorswim, this, this is a very easy setup to do to get it to calculate for you. So what I did, we're, we're looking at a virtual account here. Um, so don't, don't, don't go and make any of these trades on Monday. You know, I'm not recommending any of these stocks or any of these trades right now. I, I just put some sample trades in here just so we can see how the deltas are calculated. And what I did is I took a mix of both stocks and options. You know, for example, on Nucor, we have 100 shares. On, on the SPX, um, what I did there is I basically put on a hedge. So I put on a, a bear put spread, which basically hedges against these long positions. And then on SQ, I bought calls, which is bullish. And on UPST, I sold puts, which again is bullish. So now let's say you have these positions in your account and you're trying to figure out, okay, well, how, how bullish or bearish is my account right now? Well, it's really easy to do. All you have to do is you see this uh, beta waiting up in here, you check that box. Now, when you check that box, this window will open up. And in this window, you just type in SPY. Now, remember I said you want to compare your portfolio to the overall market. That's the, that's the easiest, most consistent way to do it. If you start comparing it to different to individual stocks, then you're, you're never going to have a true um, number that you can use consistently you know, over time to compare to. So once you have that entered, all you need to do is go over to the right side here. You see this little gear icon. You click on that up in the search you type in Delta and just select this first one that comes up and go add item. Once you have that in this column, you click OK and now this Delta comes up. Now what you'll need to do if you haven't, uh, and this might just be because I'm using the virtual, uh, but just to get those numbers to come up, you need to open up the SPY chart just so it gets the data. And we'll see that here in a second. OK, it's got the prices. Then we go back over to our monitor and now you see these Delta numbers are filled in. So here's what this is telling you. It's basically exactly what we expected. It's showing positive values for all our bullish positions. So for example, NUE, we got 100 shares. It gives us an overall delta of 61. Now remember, this is compared to the SPY. Here, let me just show you real quick 
you know, just as an example, if we typed in NUE instead of SPY here, look what happens. We get 100, okay, which is exactly what's supposed to happen. We have 100 shares. That's equivalent to a 100 delta in NUE, okay? So you know this thing is working properly, okay? So when we put the SPY, again, what it's doing is it's taking that particular stock and comparing it to the overall market. So that's how it comes up with the number of 61. Okay, so for SPX, again, remember I said that one was a bearish trade, it was a hedge. Um, that one's coming up at negative 63. And then these last two, you know, buying a call, selling a put, both bullish positions. They both give us, you know, positive numbers, not very high. I mean, they're small positions, you know, two contracts each. So we got a 32 and a 15. So let me just close these just so it's a little easier here to view. And basically what, what it's telling you, it'll give you a number for each position, positive or negative, And then it calculates your overall uh, subtotal, your overall portfolio weighted average compared to SPY for the delta. If you remember, 46 is a very low number. 46 falls into that range of we're very neutral. So if this is what your portfolio looks like, if you have a delta of 46, basically what that's saying is that you have a pretty much equal mix of long and short positions and any big move in the market, either up or down, your value, your portfolio balance is not gonna change very much, okay? Now, let me give you one last example on here. Let's say, I just wanna show you how making an additional uh, trade, how that can affect your delta value. So let's pick a stock, you know, let, let's say Tesla, for example. So let's go over to the, to the trading site and we'll type in Tesla. And let's say that we are bullish on Tesla. Okay, so let's say we wanna make a trade. Um, current stock price is 223.40. And let's say that we think in the next, you know, the next couple of weeks, in the next several weeks, um, for some reason, Tesla's really going to, gonna, you know, it's, it's going to the moon. Tesla's going way up. So I like to go out a little bit in time, even when I'm making, you know, bullish bets like that. So let's say we look at the September 15th uh, option expiry. And, and again, the stock price is at 220. So let's go, we'll scroll down to the at the money calls. So that's around 220, 225. So we look at our deltas, you know, we see a delta of 0 0.59, 0 0.52. You know, again, if you're really bullish, you typically want a higher delta, you know, that way it takes advantage of that move. It has a larger move in the option correlating with the stock. So let's say, you know, we want to get like the 6.3 or the 6.6. Okay, let's, let's say the 6.3 option. So if we're going to buy the 216, 67 calls. Um, so that's this one right here. It's $15.70. So we click on that. Now, again, let's say we're, we're really bullish, okay? So let, you know, let's say we want to buy like, uh, you know, eight contracts, for example. Okay, great. Well, what does that mean? So remember, if we're buying eight contracts, that's equivalent to 800 shares. Now, we're, that's not exactly the same as buying 800 shares, right? That delta of 0.63 is telling us that if we buy this option, it is going to feel like, or it's going to be the equivalent of, 0.63 of actually buying the share. Okay, so at eight contracts, that would be 800 shares multiplied by 0.63 gives you 504. So if we make this trade of eight contracts and whatever the stock does from here, our account balance is going to feel as if we owned 504 actual shares in Tesla. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. You know, again, this is a virtual uh, trading platform. So we'll enter this trade, hit send and there you go. The virtual bot made the trade. Okay, so now we go back over to our monitor tab and we see this new Tesla trade here. Well, look at what happened to our Delta. So again, remember, we were, we we're very bullish. We, we opened up a really large position in Tesla compared to the position size of all of our other, you know, all of our other trades. So this Tesla call, it gives you a Delta of 484. Okay, so look at what that did to our overall portfolio. Brought it up to 530 from... You know, whatever we were at, 40, I think, before. So when you look at something like this, if, if, if you see that your overall delta on your portfolio is like 500 or, you know, higher, 600, 700, that indicates extremely bullish sentiment, okay? Now, I, I, again, I mean, you, can, you always got to be careful with this because, sure, it, it's possible that you may think one particular stock is going to the moon while the rest of the market's going to trade sideways. Okay, sure, that's possible. But you have to think of it from an overall risk management perspective. If it's just one stock like it is in this example, then okay, maybe you can justify that to yourself on, on you know, why your portfolio looks that way. But let's say, you know, let's say all of your um, various stock options or trades or whatever, um, let's, let's say they're all high and 
you know, they're all in the 100, 150 range. And when you add them up, you're like around five or 600. Well, what that's telling you is that you are, have a very strong bullish belief on the market. And if that's not true, you know, if, if that's not really what you think the market's going to do in the next several weeks, you really need to adjust your positions. Either, you know, either put a hedge on that'll lower this delta, maybe close out some of your positions, trim some, take some profit, you know, take some partial profits off the table, you know, do something to lower that overall delta. So again, th this is a number that I use all the time. It's very useful to kind of know um, the overall delta of your portfolio. All right, so there you have it. That's delta. Um, again, this is the Greek that I probably use the most, both from an option trading and an overall portfolio management perspective. Um, that doesn't mean the other uh, Greeks are not important. You know, we'll be doing uh, videos on gamma, theta, vega. So, you know, look out for those. Um, I, I do use those in option trading. But again, those are specific just to options. And, and I, I do have a preference for delta. But I do still use those. It is important to get as much information as you can when making a trade. So, you know, any indicator that you can use that will help, you know, why not look at it? So check out those videos once they're posted. Um, hope you enjoyed this content. Hopefully you learned something and you can apply this to your own trading and help improve your account balance. If you enjoyed this video, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really helps us out a lot. And we'll see you next time.